Hey guys, it's Taku. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I am here with Summer Film Spotlight number 5, and that is over Science Saru's 2019 film Ride Your Wave, which was brought to us by G Kids. I just finished watching this film about an hour ago, so all of the details are still very fresh in my head, and let me say that this is a roller coaster of emotions. I love this movie so much. But let's go ahead and talk about the plot. Hinako, who is our main character, she's the girl on the cover, she is a lover of the ocean, she loves to surf, and she recently moved back to an oceanside town for college so that she could be closer to the sea and surf and all of that. While she is there, an accidental fire breaks out in her apartment and she is saved by a firefighter by the name of Minato. Minato and Hinako kind of hit it off together and that quickly escalates into a first date, a second date, and a beautiful romance that lasts for the good first like 30 minutes of the film. That is until the sadness breaks out and I this is a minor spoiler but at the same time it's in the trailer and it's like the punch of the movie so I don't know if I should even worry about it. But in case you are turned off just know that it gets my full recommendation here but after the first 30 minutes or so Minato does die tragically in an accident saving someone else's life and this leaves Hinako to kind of hallucinating about seeing him in the water they share a very special song together that kind of unites them over the course of the movie and this song whenever she sings it whenever she like thinks about it it like conjures images of Minato in the water so it leads her to first just turning on the tap water holding up her glass and singing that song just so that she could see his face again and kind of talk to him through the glass but then things start to get weird when she's carrying around a water bottle that she can see him through and eventually she fills up this this large plastic porpoise like little whale doll and is carrying him around like it's really funny it's a very beautiful and funny and youthful take on grief and loss and ultimately trying to overcome those the real question that viewers will be asking as they are going through this film is will they be able to stay like this forever you know because other people can't see Minato only she does so she's walking around carrying this giant porpoise doll and everyone thinks that she's crazy but of course the answer to that question is no and so a lot of this story is seeing if Hinako can kind of get back on her feet and accept what has happened and eventually move on and be able to ride her own wave. At about an hour and a half, the film really speeds by nicely, and I mean that in a good way. Like, there are some of these, like, romance drama with a little bit of supernatural that, like, really take forever um, to unfold, and this one, maybe it's just because of the way that it's set up in the beginning, but it allows for all of the action later to feel really natural, and you just, I mean, you get caught up in the wave, and it's really nice. I ended up enjoying this film a lot more than I thought I would. I'm actually on a bit of a Masaki Yuasa kick right now. So I'm like watching Japan Sinks, Japan 2020 on Netflix. And then when I hopped over and watched this, I was just like, oh my gosh, Masaki Yuasa is a brilliant director. And I bring up the director because uh, normally he kind of grabs these weird little quirky uh, supernatural type of gigs. But with this one, it is purely almost, you know, just romance. A lot of people are going to be able to relate to this when they're watching it. And even if you don't have, you know, your own love, this is such a beautiful film that will make you fall in love with these characters I'm not gonna lie I was living vicariously through these two because they are absolutely couple goals this movie is so cute but Minato's friend Wasabi who is also a firefighter is like a really kind of soft cinnamon dough ball character in his own right he's clumsy just like Hinako is and he makes lots of mistakes but he's very adamant on you know pursuing his own dreams and there is a sub kind of romance plot with him and Minato's sister and I just really like how tight-knit this cast is the story the plot the characters just the relationships all of it fits together so nicely and succinctly I think if this film were any longer it would have dragged on too long that and you would have had to introduce some other weird sort of background thing that just didn't need to be there so in that regard I think it is 
a really nicely tightly directed film that uh, yeah a lot of people are going to be able to enjoy there is a bit of a supernatural twist at the end of course because it is an anime movie and i am someone who really likes seeing oceans and seasides and water even though i have yet to go to the ocean personally i am inspired by seeing the sea and so to see all of this animated very fluently and just with Masaki Yuasa's wild direction style. Which is a really cool film because water can take on just about any shape that you want. I mean, heck, it takes on Minato in this movie. And so just seeing the way that water is animated, all the waves, uh, just it's really beautiful. The colors are very vibrant. I actually really like the contrast of Hinako's kind of orange aura with the complementary of his very cool blue. And yeah, this is just a really great film about romance, about a little bit about self-discovery and yeah overcoming loss and acceptance i think the themes of friendship also help really pull this thing again kind of out of the romantic slog because it is a mostly wholly optimistic and fun film to watch. You're not going to watch this and feel incredibly down. Instead, you may watch this and feel down during parts of it, but it does lift you up by the end. And the end, oh my gosh, they threw in a little twist that just made me cry. I was actually sitting here, again, just like an hour ago, like crying on my couch watching this. And so I hope if you guys do decide to pick up Ride Your Wave, G Kids brought this to us and it is dubbed and oh my god, the dub is so good. I absolutely love the casting for it. Such a great dub. So. Definitely, if you have not seen this already, Ride Your Wave is an amazing movie. I would honestly give this as a romance film because I'm not someone who normally gravitates towards romance, but this is a 9 out of 10 for me. I love seeing all of the water animation. I love the fun, quirky direction style. And again, it is a romance drama about loss and grief without being too heavy handed. And that's what a lot of people are going to get out of this. So guys, thank you so much for watching this Summer Film Spotlight. Let me know if you have seen Ride Your Wave or if you've got any of Masaki Yuasa's films that you'd like me to to check out. I think I do want to hit up Lou Over the Wall sometime before the summer ends. So if it's not the next one, uh, you will hopefully see Lou Over the Wall sometime. And I also have The Night of Short Walk on Girl. So looks like we might be in a bit of a Masaki Yuasa kick for a while. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Definitely again, let me know your thoughts and till next time.